Um, with, specifically with regards to sudden cardiac death, um, in high school athletes, for example, it's been estimated in some of the studies I've read, one in 100,000 to one in 300,000. Right. Is that an accurate estimate? Yes. I, I, I mean, there was a study done in Minnesota. They had 650,000 athletes student athletes and three died suddenly so that would be about one in in two hundred thousand um so it is a very very rare event of course when it happens it's devastating devastating to the obviously to the youngster and devastating to the family and the school it's it's a very rare event but in many of the instances it's it's preventable and that's really the key of of what we're trying to do is figure out how can we identify the youngster at risk now, at risk does not mean that that youngster is going to die. I mean, the risk may be one in 10,000. Um, in other words, it ten, you take 10,000 athletes. One may have a condition where they're at risk of dying suddenly. It doesn't mean that that person's going to die suddenly. Maybe one out of 10 of those will die suddenly. But at least you've identified uh, that group of youngsters that you need to potentially restrict from athletic endeavors. Um, but it's not a lot of athletes, but the key is to try to identify the ones that may be at risk. This is a condition that's most common in males more than females, and in, uh, in terms of the type of sports, it's usually seen in football and basketball players. That's right. That's right. It's, it's clearly somewhat more common in, in males, um, probably a, uh, a function of the sports they do. In fact, um, the, the guru of all of this is someone named Barry Marin, who's still – um, writing a lot about sudden death and looked at a lot of autopsies on um, athletes that die suddenly. And, and, and basically about 90% uh, were male. Um, and obviously we'll talk about the common causes. Um, but yes, it tends to be largely in basketball and football, um, although one of the most um, well-known deaths happened to be in a, a female named Flo Hyman, who was a volleyball star who had... Um, something called Marfan syndrome, and she actually, her death really started um, a lot of the work that's been done in Marfan syndrome. So she wasn't playing football or basketball, and she wasn't a male, but she did die suddenly of, of a disease that affects the heart. You've been practicing cardiology for a long time. Is this something that you've come across in your own practice? Well, fortunately, um, I, I personally haven't had a, 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 an unexpected death in a patient. However, um, the way I got involved in, in doing all this was approximately, I would say, 20 or 25 years ago when um, a, high, a high school athlete died while playing football at one of our Long Island school districts. And it, it, it raised the question of his other ways of preventing it from happening. And um, that's when we started many years ago to screen uh, athletes with electrocardiograms, which we'll talk about, I'm sure, in, in a few minutes, about what do you do? How do you screen athletes? But, um, yes, I've had it happen, not to my own patients, but it's clearly something that um, does happen, and it seems to happen more frequently than one would think, although when you realize there's a couple of million uh, teenagers in uh, United States uh, uh, athletic programs, um, it, you know, when you take the small percentage, it does add up. But we're talking about 2 million youngsters participating in sports. Almost all of them are healthy and safe for them to participate. 